talk about enthusiasm. One of the distinctions of self-motivation. Morning, Sherry. Aloha Ohana. Yes, it is. Morning, Bradley. Hey, Bradley, a big guy's not an affirmation I want anymore. <laughs> See, you say what you say is, "Hey, skinny." That's what you say. <laughs> yeah, way to go, Doug. Tag Tom Chenault. Where's he? So, um, here's uh, here's a new thing I'm going to do this morning. So, uh, when I'm done with my live, I got another 45 minutes of hiking to do. So, uh, I'm going to call one of you. So, if anybody has a like a coaching issue, this morning is a free personal one-on-one -on -one coaching call. So, I'm going to call one of you after we talk about enthusiasm. And we're going to talk about, uh, you know, where you might be stuck, what we can do to move you forward. So, if you want me to call you, <laughs> you have to put your phone number in here. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Maybe it's not. I suppose you could private message me your phone number, but then I have to go look at my messages. Anyway, however you get me your phone number, I'm going to pick one of you. I'm going to pick it randomly. Well, good morning, Penny. I talked to Penny yesterday, so I don't have to talk to her today. I love you, Penny. And uh, I'm going to have a little coaching conversation with you for 30 minutes if you want. So uh, let's talk about enthusiasm. So one of the cool things about the word enthusiasm, most of you have probably heard this before, is enthuse, the first part of that word, I believe is the Greek word for God within. So I want you to think about enthusiasm. Good morning, Tommy. I want you to think about the word enthusiasm and I want you to think about the distinction enthusiasm and like get a vision of you being enthusiastic. So I prefer to call it on fire, like a, an internal fire. So that map that on to anything you want to do. So you want to get fit, you want to improve your relationships, you want to reach out to more people, you want to sell more product, get more customers, you want to build a bigger sales team. Just think about how important enthusiasm, the fire that you bring to the project or the conversation, think about how important that is, right? Like on a scale of one to 10, if what you bring to bear on the project, on the single daily action, on the conversation, if you bring like a wet towel to that conversation, if if what you sound like is, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm trying, yeah, I, uh, who wants to join that? Who wants to come to that party? Nobody, right? So like, Number, one of the number one things you can do to enroll people, including you, enrolling you in what you want to do is you got to bring fire to the conversation. So if you're having a conversation about, okay, I want to get out and exercise every day, you can't bring whiny, wet towel to that conversation. You got to bring fire to the conversation. Hey, Richard, let's go do this. Come on. Right? Hey, we can get fit one step at a time, one day at a time. Think of where we'll be. Like, I haven't added it up yet, but in the month of August, you know, I will have done perhaps, you know, two or three thousand push ups. So you cast that vision for yourself with fire. Like, hey, the difference between you no push ups and you two or three thousand push ups later, what's the difference, right? Fitness is the difference. And so you just bring that fire conversation to yourself or bring that fire conversation to other people. Now, when you're bringing a fire conversation to other people, when you're bringing enthusiasm to other people, you got to also apply that start off where people are, like meet people where they are, right? Because you and I can get all on fire about what we're doing and we can bring that fire to other people, but we can also burn them with it. So the analogy that I use is, you know, you're on fire going 100 miles an hour down the road and your high performance vehicle, whatever that is, your opportunity. And you see this lovely family 
walking down the side of the road, you know, the mom and dad and three kids and they're all in their Sunday best, right? And of course you're thinking because your agenda is, well, I, I got to recruit people. I got to add people to my team. I'm on fire about this, right? So you're, uh, what you see them is like targets. <laughs> this is a target rich environment. You see them as fresh meat, right? And you're all on fire. You got this vision about where you're going, right? You got to rank advance this month or you got to win the contest or you got to double your income or whatever. So you drive by this poor family at 100 miles an hour and you open the door and say, get in, right? <laughs> We're going to the top. Of course, they end up over in the ditch all bloody, right? Because you didn't meet them where they were at. And you don't even know what they want, why they're walking or where they're going. So when you, when you have that internal fire, you got to like manage it, which would be like slow down to about three miles an hour as you pull up to them, roll your window down and say, hey, where are you all headed? And they might say, you know, we're just uh, taking a family hike to church this morning. So then you notice how you're, get in, we're going to the top. <laughs> Doesn't exactly fit for where the family's going this morning and why they're walking, right? Or they may say our car broke down a few miles back and we got to get our daughter to the hospital, right? Okay, now, hey, get in. We're not going to the top, but I'll take you to the hospital, right? So then when people, you know, get with you, if people decide, hey, yeah, I'm going to get in your car, I'm going to go with you, then what you do is just slowly meter out that enthusiasm, like, you know, start at their level, start where they're at, and then bring them up to your level if that's where they want to go. How do you know where they want to go? You got to ask them and you got to listen. But enthusiasm is perhaps the most distinct and powerful component of self-motivation. And how do you get it? How do you get on fire? How do you like build that steam up inside of yourself so you can meter it out when you need it? How do you create the energy? Again, it's one of the mechanical components of the difference between vision and self-motivation and goal setting. So to the degree that you have a crystal clear vision, a story about where you're going, why you're going there, how that's going to make you feel, and you have a high level of belief that it's inevitable that you get there, you're going to have enthusiasm. See, the difference between goal setting and vision, folks, is you can have a goal about you're going somewhere, but if I ask you on a scale of one to 10, what's your belief about whether or not you're gonna get there? If I hear whiny, probably, try, if I hear victim energy, there's no belief there. There's probably not even any belief that it's possible. There's three levels of belief that determine vision. One is possible, one is probable, one is inevitable. So those are the three layers. We don't even start a project unless we believe it's possible. Like, like you're not gonna start anything if your story is it's impossible. You're just gonna stand there and look at it. You may want it, but you won't start it. We start when we believe something's possible. We keep going when we think something's probable. We create the fire to finish when we believe something's inevitable. And like I believe I said yesterday, faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing over again. Faith comes from space repetition. So how you create the fire is you create your vision and you study your vision. You study it over and over and over and over again. And of course, the definition of how a vision is written is though it is already happening, right? A vision is not, I want it to happen. So the story is it's over there and I'm still over here and I wanna get over there. That's a goal. Goal setting is really powerful, but vision work is a hundred times more powerful than goal setting because vision work incorporates the belief of probable and inevitable. Possible, probable, and inevitable. It's really not a vision until you believe it's at least probable. So how do you get there? Write out that vision. Study the mechanics of how to write an accurate vision and visualize it, read it. Watch the movie, listen to it, experience it, meditate on it over and over and over and over and over again. And you'll find that your belief level rises, not necessarily from evidence, but from spaced repetition of visualization. And here's the, 
Here's the neuroscience about why that is. Why can you and I study something that we just imagined, that we just made up, and learn to believe in it? Because the part of us, folks, that's powerful, not the critical conscious mind, but the subconscious mind, and our emotional IQ, and our spiritual self, and even the, the biology of the belief of our body, can't tell the difference between a real experience and one vividly imagined. We, the part of us that gets things done, moves mountains, cannot tell the difference between a real experience and one vividly imagined. So if you had the real experience of accomplishing whatever it is you wanted to accomplish over and over and over again, notice how you would believe it's not only possible, probable, but you would believe it's inevitable. Why? Because you've done it. So the part of us that's powerful can't tell the difference between having done it and visualizing having done it. So just visualize it, just make it up and study it over and over and over and over again and you'll actually create the confidence as though you have a history of doing it and then you'll bring that confidence to bear on the project. You'll bring the fire. You'll bring the fire to yourself. You'll bring the fire to other people. People will come to watch you internally burn with enthusiasm. They'll come to warm their bodies around you. They'll come to get inspired around you. Enthusiasm, folks, is the key to riches. So there, sun's blinding me in my face. I'm gonna show you my new gizmo. I love gizmos. Can you see this thing? It's even got feet on it. This is kind of called a monopod. And it's the low tech version of a gimbal. <laughs> and a high tech version of a selfie stick. So it extends out to be like six feet tall and it's got feet on it. And uh, it's like better than a selfie stick because it's more stable, but it uh, doesn't go crazy on its own like a gimbal. My newest gadget. It's a Kooli Hoda. K-O-O-L-E-H-A-O-D-A. -O -O Model K288. Like 30 bucks or something. Hey gang, I trust you got some fire and some tips from Daily Dose of Salt. We got up to 60 people, so we still haven't hit the even the third generation of 64. Four, 16, 64. And we gotta get to 256, that's fourth generation. It's just, it's just four who get four who get four who get four. Come on, come on, hey Don. Um, all right, I'm gonna finish my hike. And I'm going to look for a phone number. I'm not calling to socialize. So drop me your number somehow. If you're, in, uh, if you're up to something big, don't call me with whiny, like in a funk, because you're a victim of life. Call me if you're up to something big. Actually, don't call me. I'm going to call you. Um, okay. I'm going to go look for a number and call somebody. See you tomorrow.